Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how you go about finding the area within this loop here. For this polar curve with equation r equals a times the cosine of 3 theta, a being a constant. Now in order to find this area, first of all what we've got to establish is what the angle would have to be going from here to here. Now for this situation, at this point here, r would be equal to 0. So what we'll do is we'll just say when r equals 0. When r equals 0, it follows that the cosine of 3 theta must be equal to 0. And if that's the case, then 3 theta must be equal to plus or minus pi upon 2 radians, the equivalent of 90 degrees, plus or minus 90 degrees. And it could also be equal to plus or minus 3 pi over 2, or in fact plus or minus 5 pi over 2. So if I divide each of these angles now by 3, we'll see that theta could equal plus or minus pi over 6, or plus or minus pi over 2, or plus or minus 5 pi over 6. Now this means that these lines off here and here come off at angles of minus pi upon 6, and this one is plus pi upon 6. If we were to look at the lines coming off here and here, this one would be at pi upon 2, and this one here would be at 5 pi upon 6. And as for two lines coming off of this loop here, this would be at minus 5 pi upon 6, and this one would be at minus pi upon 2. Now we only need to find the area of this loop, so my angles then will be going from minus pi upon 6 to pi upon 6. So when it comes to working out the area, let's just section this off here. So the area then is given by half the integral of r squared integrated with respect to theta. And the angle will go from minus pi upon 6 to pi upon 6 radians. So that means that this area is going to be half. And then if we square r, squaring r, we're going to get a squared cos squared 3 theta. Well, I can bring out the a squared outside the integral because it's a constant then. And then we've got the integral of cos squared 3 theta integrated with respect to theta going between the limits minus pi upon 6 to pi upon 6. So cleaning this up, what we've got then is a squared over 2 here. So we've got a squared over 2. And when it comes to integrating then cos squared 3 theta between minus pi upon 6 and pi upon 6, I need to use an identity for this. We should be familiar with this. I've done it many times over in the past. And that is we turn to the identity cos 2a, which, remember, is identical to 2 cos squared a minus 1. And if we rearrange this for cos squared a, cos squared a becomes identical to a half of 1 plus cos 2a. OK, so in this example, if we're integrating cos squared 3 theta, a is 3 theta. So what we've got is 1 half then of 1 plus cos 6 theta. So we're integrating that then with respect to theta. So if I bring out the half, we're going to have a squared then over 4. And we're integrating then 1 plus cos 6 theta with respect to theta. 
And again, we'll just put those limits in, minus pi upon 6 to pi upon 6. So integrating this is going to give us, we'll just put that in square brackets there, integrating 1, that's going to be theta, integrating cos 6 theta, that's going to be 1 sixth sine 6 theta. And so we've got our limits then, again, minus pi upon 6 to pi upon 6. And if we substitute pi upon 6 in, first of all, we've got our e squared over 4 on the outside there. And so we've got pi upon 6 here. And then we've got the sine of 6 times pi upon 6. That's going to be the sine of pi, which is going to be 0. So we've got plus 0 here. And then from this we subtract what we get when we put minus pi upon 6 in. So that's going to be minus pi upon 6. And for this one, we're going to have the sine of minus pi, which is 0 as well. So put that as 0. And so what we've got here is pi over 3 when we add pi upon 6 plus another pi upon 6. So that's pi over 3 times it with a squared over 4, and so what you've got is pi a squared over 12 as that area. And I'll just write square units. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then how to find the area of a loop, say.